Oh man, we are finally, finally in Phoenix. After 35 races, after a long season, after a pandemic break, after all of this stuff, we are finally to the final race of the year. So today, what I want to do is I'm going to look in depth a little bit at all four of the guys that are going to be going for a championship on Sunday and give you my outlook on it. Now, I gave my prediction last night on the NASCAR Weekly Podcast, but for those of you who haven't seen it, I won't spoil it yet. So let's start out by looking at each individual driver. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the driver's overall stats this season. I'm going to look at how they've done in the 750 horsepower package this season. And then I'm going to look at how they've done with 750 horsepower at Phoenix in the past. So basically 2015 through 2018 and then the 2020 race. I think this will really, really help to open up people's minds to who they might want to pick for the championship and who will be the favorite and who might be at a disadvantage. Uh, so let's start off with the guy who has been the most dominant out of everybody all season, Denny Hamlin. Hamlin so far this year has seven wins, 17 top fives, and 20 top tens. His average finish is 9.5 and he has led over a thousand laps. So overall, that looks like a really good season, but actually Hamlin is tied for the least amount of top tens in all of the final four, and he really hasn't had a good playoff. He's just kind of been in the right place at the right time to advance. So looking back at the 750 horsepower package this year, he hasn't actually run that great. Now he's led a lot of laps, over 400 laps led, but he in nine starts only has one win, and he has two top fives and two top tens. So he has a win and he finished second at Loudon. In the Phoenix race before the pandemic break, he finished 20th. And I'm looking back at some of these other ones, a 24th at Martinsville. He finished only 11th at Martinsville this past week. Bristol, 21st. Dover in the second race right after he won, 19th. Richmond, 12th. These aren't numbers that really scream to me championship favorite. So it's going to be really interesting to see if this 11 team can buck the trend of really Denny Hamlin's career and try and actually go up there and get a championship. I think that they have the fortitude and the speed overall in the season to do it. It's just a matter of showing up in crunch time. Now, looking back at the nine Phoenix races I talked about before with the 750 package or some variant of it. I'm looking back at these, and of all the final four drivers, he has led laps in the least amount of races. He's got two top fives, but one came in 2018 in the spring, and the other came in 2016. He also has three finishes, a 20th or worse, and one of those was in the spring. Now, it's important to say that he is using a new car they announced this week, so he could maybe have some speed that we're not seeing. But right now, Denny Hamlin looks to be at a disadvantage going into this race, which is odd because Hamlin is actually fairly good overall in his career at Phoenix. But right now, I would not put him as a favorite. So the next guy we're going to look at here is Joey Logano. I'm sure that's going to be the most popular segment of this video. This season, Logano has three wins. He has 11 top fives and 20 top tens. So he actually has the lowest amount of wins and top fives of final four drivers. And he has the worst average finish of the season at 12.1, has led the least amount of laps in 814, and he has more DNFs than any of the other drivers. So looking at the 750 package, Logano looks really good. I mean, really, really good. One of the few races that he actually finished outside the top 10 because he finished in the top 10 seven of the nine 750 horsepower package races. One of those was at Bristol where he was leading and he got taken out by Chase Elliott. So he's pretty good. And then 11th at the second Bristol. So he has been rock solid at these 750 tracks. Now, the ones I hear that are very applicable to Phoenix are, well, obviously the spring Phoenix race, but also Loudon. So how do you do there? Well, in the spring, he won at Phoenix, leading 60 laps. And at Loudoun, he finished fourth, which is very respectable. I've heard you also can compare Richmond. Well, he finished third there and led 45 laps. So a 6.8 average finish at these types of tracks, that's pretty good. It's the best of anybody. So he is going to definitely be a threat. But how do you do in Phoenix with the 750 variant? 
Well, obviously, like I said before, he won in the spring, but looking back, he actually really struggles when he doesn't win. His last top five at the track that wasn't a win was in 2015. Now in 2016, he did win, but between these two wins, he had finishes of 31st, 12th, 19th, and 37th. I would expect that if Lugano stays out of trouble, he could be the championship favorite, but it's just a matter of really being consistently up front. So I don't know yet with Lugano. Last night on the podcast, I picked him, but it could go either way. Now, next up is the guy that a lot of people are saying is the favorite for the championship. And I want to pop the brakes a little bit with this, but I understand where people are coming from with it. Brad Keselowski right now seems to be the favorite for the championship. So far in 35 starts, he has four wins, 12 top fives, 23 top tens, and a 10.3 average. He's also led 936 laps this year. So overall, it's a season. He's had a pretty great season. Now, looking at how he did in the 750 package, aside from a 34th at Bristol, which was an anomaly, he has not finished below 11th. He has led laps in all but one of the 750 horsepower races, and he has led more laps at these tracks than any other driver, 672. He has three wins, five top fives, seven top tens. So he's more wins at these tracks than anybody else. He actually has just as many wins at these type of race tracks as the rest of the final four combined. So at least with this year, with 750, he seems to be the favorite. Now, looking back at other 750 Phoenix races, it's not as clear. He finished 11th in the spring, leading 82 laps. Not great, but he led laps. And looking back, he has two top fives, a second in 2018 and a fifth in 2017. But he also has very mediocre finishes, 15th, 16th, 14th, 29th. So as long as they show up with the speed they've had all year, I think he'll be a threat. I think he'll be the favorite in a lot of ways. I mean, they're using the same car that he used to win Loudon and Richmond. And he dominated those races. He led 184 laps at Loudoun earlier this year and 192 at Richmond. So I think that he's going to be the favorite. I'm going to save the most popular guy here for last, Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott has four wins this year, 14 top fives and 21 top tens and averages a 12th place finish. And he's also led more laps this season than anybody else in the final four with 1,094. Now, a lot of that was boosted up last week with 236 laps led in his win at Martinsville, but still, he's led more than anyone else in the final four. So looking at the 750 horsepower races, I'm looking back and Elliott has been pretty solid too. You know, one of those races, like I said before, that he finished outside the top 10, he was going for a win at the end of it at Bristol. He has led 470 laps, averaging 11.1 average finish, and the only anomaly he had was a 39th at Dover, which I think we can kind of take out of the equation. So looking back, he's had one win, but he's had four top fives and seven top tens. And that one win came last week. So momentum is on his side. The last three races with this package, he's finished fifth, seventh, and first. So Chase Elliott should be up there. Now, looking back at how he's done other Phoenix races, I know we can't go all the way back to 2015 because his career started in 2016, but looking, he's been rock solid there too. He's led in four of the seven races he's been a part of in this kind of variant. He has a seventh place finish in the spring, which I would actually argue is pretty good seeing how his team seems to get better as the year goes on. But he also has a third place finish, a second place finish, a ninth and an eighth in the past, as well as a 23rd and a 12th. So I would say that Chase Elliott should be right up there with Brad Keselowski and Joey Logano. The only one that seems to be really kind of lagging back is Denny Hamlin which is kind of odd when you look at how good his season has been. Now, Phoenix is a wonky track. Wonky things happen at it. So anything could happen. You know, for all we know, the man that we were talking about in the early part of the week, Kevin Harvick, the man that got eliminated, he could go out and dominate. This could be a race for second or third. We don't know. It's just a matter of waiting for him to race. But that's all I got, guys. I want to hear what you think now. Who's your pick to win at Phoenix and why? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're at it, leave a like on this video and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. And until next time, guys, have a good one.